cool is that? And those are only a few of the ways that angles are used in real life. Welcome to this video. First, let's take a step back and talk about the definition of an angle. An angle is formed by two rays with the same endpoint. So taking a look at this diagram here, we have ray AB and ray AC. And these rays are called the sides of the angle. And this point right here, point A, is called the vertex. So take a second and reread the definition. Now, let's talk about naming angles. There are several different ways to name angles. You can name an angle by the vertex. And please take note of this symbol that's right in front of the A. That is the symbol that we use to represent an angle. It makes sense because it looks just like an angle. We can also use a point on a ray plus the vertex and a point on the other ray. So we can name it angle BAC. And again, take note that the vertex always has to be in the middle. Order is important. And we can go in the opposite direction as well. We have a point on the ray, vertex, and a point on this ray here. And that would be angle CAB. And if we're given a number in the interior of an angle, we can use that as well and just call it angle one. So let's review. We can name it by the vertex. We can name it by points on the ray as long as the vertex is in the middle. And we can go in either direction. And we can also name it by a number if we're given a number in the interior of an angle. Now, let's talk about classifying angles. An acute angle is just like it sounds. It's a cute little angle, meaning that it's just a little angle. It's in between 0 and 90 degrees. A right angle is an angle that's always 90 degrees. And again, take note of this symbol right here. When we see this, this means that we are talking about a right angle, which again is always 90 degrees. And an obtuse angle, can you guess? An obtuse means very large. So yes, an obtuse angle is just a very large angle. It's in between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. And we have a straight angle. A straight angle is just a straight line. And a straight angle is always 180 degrees. Now we're going to talk about the angle addition postulate. But let's go ahead and take a look at the words here. Angle addition means that we're going to be adding some angles together. Postulate is an accepted statement or fact. It's just going to make sense. First, I'm going to put it in my own words, and then I'll give it to you properly. So the ad angle addition postulate just means that if you have an angle and you add the angle that is adjacent to it or right next to it, so if you add this angle plus this angle, can you guess what you're going to get? You're just going to get this whole big angle. So saying it properly, we would say the measure of angle AOB, and let's take a step back. This M always stands for measure, and that is measuring it in numbers. In a, the case of an angle, we're always going to measure it in degrees. So the measure of angle AOB, which is this angle here, plus the measure of angle BOC equals the measure of angle A. O, C. Just makes sense. Let's look at how we might apply the angle addition postulate. Let's say that we're given this information here. And then take a look over here. We are also given that the measure of angle AOC, which is this whole big angle, equals 155 degrees. So the angle addition postulate is right here. So let's use some substitution. And instead of this, I'm going to substitute, and I am going to put this information here. 
So I have now that this angle, AOB, plus this angle, which was BOC, equals 155 degrees. And again, I use the substitution property of equality there. And this is a little bit different than what you were doing in algebra. In geometry, we actually need to get in the habit of justifying each step. You do it naturally, but now we need to actually write it down. The next step that we need to do is just to combine our like terms. So I have 4x plus 3x is 7x. A negative 20 plus 14 is negative 6 equals 155. And then I'm going to use the addition property to add 6 to both sides and then the division property. And then I'm left with x equals 23. I'll see you guys later.